For Geospatial Lab 10.1, you'll be working with the multi-spec digital image processing software, which is a free software that you can download. On the Geospatial Lab 10.1 uh, lab assignment in Canvas, I've put the updated URL for that software, so you can see that here. Uh, the one in the book is off at this point. When you go to that web page, you'll come to the multi-spec web page, and you can download the software either for a Macintosh or for Windows. Uh, when you download that, you'll also need the uh, data to do the exercises for the lab. And I've put that uh, zip file right here so you can download that. Both the software and the data will need to be unzipped into clean directories. When you unzip the data, what you'll end up with is two files in that Chapter 10 folder, the IMG and the RRD file. That's all that should be in there. When you unzip the software, uh, what you'll end up with is an exe file. So in the Windows system, uh, the software doesn't install on your start menu the way other software does. So you just start up the program by double clicking on that exe file. When you open up the software, it'll open up this window. And so you're going to, the first thing you'll want to do is to expand the window to fill your screen because you're going to be looking closely at the imagery. And you'll open the image by clicking on the open button and navigating to wherever you saved the chapter 10 data, that IMG file. And what you're looking for is that CLE.IMG file. So you can go ahead and open that. And you'll be prompted to set the display specifications. So by default, it's, it opts for a three-channel color display. And it automatically puts in three of the seven bands that are available. So the image that you're working with in this particular exercise is what's called a Landsat image, and it comes from the Landsat satellite. And Landsat satellite um, captures a, a scene of a part, particular part of the Earth. And that scene, though, is captured in seven different bands, so almost seven different images in a way. And each um, band represents uh, one um, part of the electromagnetic spectrum, different kinds of uh, energy that's being captured. The, and you've read that in the beginning of that. Uh, the lab explanation. So it defaults to a standard false color composite where it places the band 4, which is a measurement of infrared uh, energy reflectance, in the red um, channel here. And it picks the 3, band 3, which is red light, or refl red reflectance, into the green uh, color gun. And then the green band, band 2, is placed into the blue color gun will produce a particular um, composite image, which we'll get to in a second. But before we go there, I want to just kind of um, illustrate what we're looking at here. So I'm going to switch instead to the one channel grayscale, just for illustration purposes. And I'm going to choose uh, band 4 as a channel that we're working with. And what we're going to look at right here is a panchromatic image. So you'll see this image comes up. And so I'll expand that. And I'll zoom in a bit. There's three zoom buttons in multi-spec. The X1 blows it up to fill the screen. Uh, the large mountains here zoom more closely. The small mountains zoom back out. Okay. So what we're looking at here, again, is a panchromatic image. We're looking at uh, a scene, uh, an area of land along near a lake. And the um, image only runs from essentially black to white. Um, all of the pixels that make up this image have values of brightness. And the brightness uh, is a reference to the level of reflectance of infrared energy, because we're looking at the infrared band. So if I zoom in more closely, you can see how this image is composed of these little squares or pixels. right? And the, each pixel is. 30 meters on a side, right? or it's about 100 feet. It comes out to 900 square meters of area. It's kind of a large area. Uh, and each square, each little patch of ground, gets a brightness value. I mean, one number that um, captures how reflective that patch of ground is in this particular band of light, so in the near infrared. How reflective is that? And again, the darker the pixel, the lower the number, the less reflective, and vice versa. So. When we look at it this way, we can see essentially the behavior of the landscape in this one band of energy. But what we're working with here are color composite images that allow us to actually look at um, how more than one band of energy is behaving in the landscape. 
So I'm going to open the image again by clicking in the open button, choose the image once more, click on open, and then this time I'm going to change it back to what it was before to three channel color. And this time I'm again choosing the band 4 which captures the infrared reflectance, but I'm also using red and green bands from the Landsat um, imagery. But you'll notice that they're being assigned to different colors. So the colors are not so important in terms of describing what the actual color of the landscape is, rather they're for illustration purposes. So I'll click OK, and then what should be a familiar uh, image comes up. This is a standard false color composite image, um, and you can kind of tell because a lot of the landscape is red. So I'm going to again zoom in so we can fill the screen, and we can see this landscape, and what, what we can tell from this image uh, well, one of the things we can see here is a variation in the, both the brightness and the color across the landscape. But we've used a very specific um, composition of colors and bands to highlight certain elements of that landscape. So the red is obviously what sticks out the most in this case uh, because we've been talking about false color, standard false color composite. We know that the red here is showing us a reflectance of vegetation because vegetation as it turns out tends to be very very reflective in the near infrared band. By contrast the bluish or whitish areas are built up areas usually concrete or exposed um, dirt and those tend to be more reflective in the blue um, channel. In this case uh, we're looking at the green um, reflectance but in any case, uh, a very um, familiar image at this point. Now I want to contrast that with a true color composite image. So I'm going to reopen the image again. But this time I'm going to use band 3, which is the red portion of the, of, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum, the red energy in the red color gun. I'm going to use green in the green and, and blue in the blue. So it kind of matches the color guns. And when we see that, we see what should look like a, a more familiar image in some ways. This is going to be the, um, the way the Earth would appear if we were looking at it with our own eyes, right? Um, and I'm going to put the two images that I just created side by side. And you'll see that I kind of reduce the image by using that button, that middle button right there. I'm not minimizing it. And I'll like, manipulate the window so I can see them both. All right, so they're at the same scale, you can see. Now, the one on the right is, again, the true color composite image, and so we can see the greens, and we see the blue of the water. It's a little dull, but this is essentially what it would look like um, if we were looking at it, again, with our eyes. On the left, we have the standard false color composite, where, uh, where one, we're using a band of energy that's not even visible to our eyes, but we're giving it the red color, so it really shows up in terms of what's reflective in that band. Now, in both images, you can, you can tell certain elements of the landscape. You can see where there's a river. You can see uh, built-up areas and distinguish them from, say, vegetated areas. Um, but what stands out in the left-hand image is the red, obviously, and that's intentional. The red is highlighting the vegetation because, as, as I said before, vegetation is very reflective in the near infrared, and that's the point, is to essentially get a better sense of what's going on with the vegetation. Now, the power of working with the color composite imagery is, in fact, simply to highlight what it is you're interested in. And part of that works by understanding that some types of features in the landscape are more or less reflective in different bands of energy. Different kinds of light are reflected or absorbed differently depending on the kind of substance it hits. And so the use of the color in the, in the image itself is not really important in terms of, say, identifying whether or not something is actually that color on the ground but rather simply in using it to highlight features that you're trying to focus on and trying to study. So again, with the false standard false color composite, we're clearly identifying, because red is, you know, grabs your attention so easily, where the vegetation is, but also in terms of identifying how healthy it is, because it turns out that healthy green vegetation is very reflective in the near infrared. Now, we could have used the blue to highlight that point, or green if we wanted to, but the point would be that we're just trying to pull that out to see it more clearly. The colors aren't so important really in, in, kind of in trying to understand them and rather just simply trying to look more at the level of reflectivity, how bright those things are in that type of energy. 
Now the second thing we're doing within multispec is we're not just looking at the images themselves, but we're also looking at a spectral profile. So I'm going to close the right hand image and just leave the standard false color composite open. And we're going to use another option, um, which is, uses a new selection graph. So I go to the window menu and choose new selection graph and it opens up a new window over here. And I'll expand that a bit. And the way this works is I'm going to pick an individual pixel in the image over here and look at the behavior of that pixel across all of the bands that Landsat captures. So I'm going to zoom in here. Oops, I already did that. And I'm going to pick that area of vegetation along that river. There we go. And I click on an area of red and I'm going to zoom in just a bit more so you can see that. And so you'll see that it highlights one pixel right here. That's the one that I'm focusing on. Okay. And here is a spectral profile. Now what this shows us is the behavior uh, or the reflectance of that patch of ground across the various bands of energy that the satellite captures. So band one re refers to um, the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we call the blue part. The two is green, the three is red, four is a near infrared, and then we get into five and six, we're into the um, uh, mid and then thermal infrared uh, and then back into the mid. So what we're seeing here then is that that patch of ground is not very reflective in band 3. It's the least reflective there and that tells us that it tends to absorb red light. Um, by contrast when we look at channel 4 or band 4 which is a near infrared it's very reflective right so you see it kind of peaks here and this peak corresponds to this brightness value over here on the left or the y-axis, right? So the higher the peak, the, more, the brighter it is in that given band, and that's the point. Now the significance of looking at this spectral profile is it turns out that different surface features have different um, patterns in terms of which bands they're reflective in and which bands they tend to be absorptive in. So in fact, if we zoom back out, say, to the water. Let me just kind of zoom out a, s a bit here so you can see where I'm at. All right. If I click on the water, pick a pixel from out there, you can see a very different spectral profile. Water tends to be very absorptive uh, across most of the um, bands that are available here, but it tends to be pretty reflective in the thermal infrared, which tends to be t with heat energy, although we're not looking so closely at that type of um, energy in this in this particular case. Um, anyways, the point here again is to highlight how it is that we understand this imagery and the ways that we can use it. And one way we can create these composite images that allow us to see very quickly in a way that's familiar to us except that we can manipulate the colors again just to highlight things. The spectral profile is another way of looking at the data. In this case we're, we're looking at small pieces of ground and looking at how the reflection changes for different types of energy. And again, because different types of surfaces are reflective or not in different forms of energy, we can actually begin to put together a library of sorts of how we expect different surfaces to behave, which can allow us to research in the future and, and much more quickly understand what's going on with the landscape.